integrated landscape scale approach to fire management was made and implementation of a coordinated mosaic burning program across target areas was undertaken to reduce wind erosion, enhance production, address critical threats to biodiversity and maintain ground cover. EcoFire's prescribed mosaic burning program has dramatically shifted the seasonality of burning, reducing large-scale uncontrolled burns and increasing biodiversity. Threatened ecological communities and EPBC listed species were protected. The monsoon vine thickets on Dampier Peninsula were recognised as a threatened ecological community under the EPBC Act. A 100 year old manga ecosystem on relic dunes on the Broome Peninsula were recognised as a priority one ecological community. Targeted control of feral species was undertaken. Management plans and implementation of improved practices for control of invasive species and protection of biodiversity values were developed. On-ground activities by Matu people in the Western Desert to monitor threatened species and complete environmental assessments were supported. Over 200 plots have been surveyed and monitored. This has included water surveys, monitoring plots for evidence of threatened fauna species such as bilbies and great desert skinks, and identifying signs of feral animals such as camel, cats, dingo, wild dogs and foxes. Because with some of them, young girls they're learning good Tracking one, cyber tracking all that. Yeah. I like doing a uh, tracking. Um, one of oh, what this thing called cyber tracking. It's all right. Yeah. And when gather, it's got big burned it very last year and it's all back. It's good green. We can all come back. A lot of bush tigers there and yeah, I decided number 11, well 11, yeah, it's all drying, you know, there's too many thick spin effects, so we had to burn some of that. When we burned it, the range, other ranger boys all went back, about two, three weeks back, and they found all the little animals all come back, till um, will be, mandang go. Good thing about these trips, we you can go back and do things again. But in different areas, there's cougar there, there's a lot of meat out there. Once you start looking after thing, things will start coming back and start looking back at you. Research and monitoring activities to protect the seagrass beds of Roebuck Bay have resulted in an increase in knowledge and understanding of the cause and impact of Lingmia blooms. The Broom Shire has adopted a drain management plan to reduce nutrients, sediments and rubbish reaching the bay via stormwater. Community engagement has been instrumental in the success achieved to date. Schools have been involved in the Keep Our Bay Clean campaign and stenciling drains. Celebrate the Bay Day was held and was a great success. The Roebuck Bay Working Group was a finalist in the 2012 and a winner in the 2013 
WA Regional Achievement Community Awards, as well as a finalist in the 2013 WA Land Care Awards. It was a major achievement was really, I think, that the group has been able to build community awareness of the links between land-based uh, pollution, land-based nutrients and sediments flowing into the bay, and those um, sediments and nutrients becoming food for these lingbeer blooms. And we've done it by, through a variety of um, means, but I think the most successful way to engage the community is to actually physically get out there and have um, as many events as possible where you talk directly to people. I think it's been a major uh, achievement. We've also made it a very holistic uh, project where we've actually not only worked with the community, but we've worked with agencies such as the Shire, the Department of Parks and Wildlife, um, Department of Fisheries and, and also the non-government organisations and we've all worked together to try and raise that community awareness about that link between, uh, as I say, land-based nutrients and sediments. And I think having that, that really strong membership allows us to, for that, that knowledge to be built within the group and then we can discuss some of the best methods to get out and talk to the community and how to engage with all the different organisations that have responsibilities for looking after the Bay. The support of traditional owners and Aboriginal corporate bodies such as the Kimberley Land Council has been instrumental in ensuring the success of coastal protection and conservation works. The Rowett Bay Working Group, when it started, uh, it was really half uh, traditional owners and the other half were made up of the uh, wider community. And of course foremost are the Yarra traditional owners, and not just members of the group, they are the traditional owners of Broome and the Bay. So no matter what projects that we undertake, Yarra traditional owners have, are always involved and they play a very key role in uh, looking after the Bay. Weeds of national significance and emerging weeds in the WA rangelands have an impact on primary production, particularly grazing management, as they take over grazing pastures, compromising productive values. They also have environmental impacts in terms of a loss of biodiversity and native vegetation, which in turn impacts native fauna that move out of the area because they can't find food sources or suitable habitat. In order to address these impacts, work has been undertaken with pastoralists and landowners to implement control programs within the Pilbara, Kimberley and Southern Rangelands regions. Starting to recover a lot of the grasslands now, um, which is obvious more cattle um, and native trees. And you know, where there was big thickets of mesquite, you've got gums and stuff growing back, and there's some obvious signs of recovery from the land where it was pretty badly degraded before from the mesquite. <laughs> Photographic monitoring undertaken in the Pilbara is providing evidence that suggests kill rates of 80% or better have occurred across all mesquite and Parkinsonia infestations treated. Yeah, with the um, mechanical control, I'm finding I'm getting really good gemina germination of uh, the native plants and the areas that previously in the thickets where I'm pushing up with a machine was unusable. I'm now getting, you know, acres and acres of country that I can graze again already. For me, the biggest thing that we've been able to do to get land managers to recognise that they have a weed problem and that they really need to do something about it is to bring them to a place like this at Marty Station where we have the single largest mesquite infestation in all of Australia and show them exactly how bad this infestation can get if you don't get onto early management. And we've actually managed to get a few of our key stakeholders 
involved and now investing thousands of dollars a year into weed programs because all we simply did was bought them here and showed them how bad it can get. Together with the Dulawalu Aboriginal Corporation and Rio Tinto, Rangelands NRM jointly funded the position of Yindabandi Cultural Heritage and Conservation Manager to work with the Nurawana Rangers on local weed management activities. The focus of the work has been managing the Parkinsonia, which has infested large sections of the riverbanks below the Millstream National Park. For the environment, um, I think it's probably one of the most important projects Getting rid of the Parkinsonia on our river system is, is absolutely important. On foremost is, is the community. I mean, there's people now that have be, oh, they've been trained. They be, they've been, they've been, um, they're now providing. They're breadwinners for their family. So it creates a social um, upliftment of the community in terms of skills development as well. And we're now embarking on a, on a, on a uh, land management and certification, uh, conservation certification course. So for the community, it's, it's huge. We get a lot of feedback from outside the community itself. So other people that want to get involved in the Norana Ranges program and what we're trying to do is establish a strong communication and bring people back out in the country and help us to de-eradicate these Parkinsonian weeds and there's good. So slowly seeing a lot of changes out while we're out in the country. The focus of the activities undertaken within the Kimberley has been on both weeds of national significance, such as rubber vine, prickly acacia, mesquite and Parkinsonia, and emerging weeds such as neem and coffee bush. This work has incorporated survey, mapping, identification and targeted control of infestations that have been intermittently controlled for a number of years. I think we've actually tuned the control methods really to an nth degree. Uh, so our, our, our success rate, our, you know, it really is 100%. Uh, that's a big, big change. Because a little rob one will wreck the country. So we're hoping to get rid of it. It's told right now where it has been removed, the local plants are coming back and are growing back stronger. And what the rubber wine has actually taken out and strangling the plants now, making it more of its, its more habitat. Yeah. Well, it's easier access to get through for hunting and that, yeah. not having to combat with the, um, the rubber wine in the way. You get more animals around. Yeah. Well, it was just a uh, job to start off with, but now it's going to be a career opportunity. The spread of species of invasive cactus are being controlled and treated at Tamula Station near Leonora in the southern rangelands. Easily spread by cattle, kangaroos and other vectors, infested areas are being fenced and outlier populations are being mapped and treated. 
A Cactus Forum was also held to talk about control options and to enable networking and linkages to be made for a collaborative approach to the control. Indigenous communities within the WA rangelands have been engaged to protect and manage the natural landscape, biodiversity and cultural values of their country. Programs have been established to engage communities in work on country, together with NRM work plans developed for Indigenous rangers, including female ranger groups. Appropriate traditional burning regimes, weeds of national significance management and recording of traditional ecological knowledge have been implemented. Six traditional owner groups have been fully engaged in the activities. More than 200 traditional owners have been back on country across more than 1,400 days of on-ground work. 80% of trips on country involve both elders and young people, allowing traditional knowledge to be transferred between generations. It's our responsibility to look after our country and all the animals that are out there. It shows us too what sort of things we can do to protect them and look after them. Yeah, no, it's good. We know what we're doing. We're showing the, um, the next lot of kids that are growing up, you know, how it, um, important it is to take care of our country and all the things that are in it. The work like burning and stuff so they can regrow and stuff. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of old spin facts out there they need burning. And, yeah, just don't want to burn it all, just a few bits and that. Yeah. Patty sort of thing, burn them. Just straight line maybe a bit. These rangelands NRM projects have provided an opportunity for traditional owners to transfer knowledge and encourage the young to learn about traditional practices to help threatened animals survive and keep country healthy for future generations. We have four or five bellers out with us. They just guide us to where the um, rock holes are. They show us tracks, what to burn, what not to burn. Sometimes we take the old people out for camping out. We'll go out in the bush, we'll make them strong, keep the culture strong. They're the ones that are showing us how to do it and all that. Because we listen to them, old people. Ecologically sustainable rangeland management plans or ESRAM plans were developed or reviewed with pastoralists in target areas. Industry and community driven approaches were used to promote sustainable land management with a focus on maintaining ecosystem function. Farmers were assisted to increase their uptake of sustainable farm and land management practices that deliver improved ecosystem services. Best Prax style action learning groups were implemented to support the development of skills and knowledge and provide important peer support systems. We are in the process of um, establishing our own cell, the Murchison Vermin Cell, and um, although we've got a fair bit of fencing already in place, the, the bit that we need to complete now, we're in the process of um, getting funding for. And I was pretty interested in, in what they were doing over here 
met in, in the management process for their cell, how they rate their members, how um, they get the money for the, uh, the maintenance of the fence and for the initial installation of the fence. The basic premise is there's going to be a high integrity fence around the cluster of 50 properties. There is going to be a transfer of control to them, to those 50 people through an incorporated association that everyone has signed up. Every one of those people have signed up a membership deal to the incorporated association that has committed financial, labour or whatever else it is to a sinking fund and also to I am going to do these things or, or I'm going to do something else. I'm supplying cash or I'm supplying machinery and labour. So it was interesting to see the fence they've built and why they built them, how they, how they have built them and also to a lesser degree how organisations like NRM are interacting with these groups in Queensland to try and facilitate these sort of projects. I see potential there for us to work together um, on a lot of issues that uh, that will make us stronger and, and hopefully we can help these guys over here a little bit as well. Extension activities with pastoralists were implemented to promote best management practice, implement rehabilitation work, manage threats, improve ground cover and carbon retention and monitoring. Devolved grants were implemented to facilitate management planning and coordination of restoration and rehabilitation.